Today, except for a tiny handful of cars in the developed world, most vehicles plying the world's roads are powered by fossil-based fuels which pump a lot of harmful carbon emissions into the atmosphere. Fossil fuel evolved from incompletely oxidized and decayed animal and vegetable matter. Examples of fossil fuels include coal, lignite, petroleum and natural gas and can only be used by burning to produce energy or heat. In the process, they produce emissions that contribute to the pollution of the atmosphere. All over the world, efforts are being made to produce fuels that are less harmful to the atmosphere. Locally in Uganda, there are some efforts, however, minimal they may look. In Mpelere, Stephen Ntambi has found value of used cooking oil that usually ends up being disposed of, sometimes contributing to the pollution because of poor disposal methods. Ntambi, who is a space systems engineer, has been able to turn used cooking oil into a useful product, biodiesel. He has set up a small lab at his home where he has been experimenting with used cooking oil collected from several restaurants around Kampala. The process of turning this cooking oil into biodiesel begins with placing it into a small Erinmir flask in specific amounts. Then the oil is heated with mild heat, not exceeding 8 degrees centigrade. This is just enough heat before the oil boils, which is vital in making it receptive to the biodiesel making process. Vegetable oil is uh, a particular class of chemical. Vegetable oil, it's still oil, like crude oil. So what I want to do is to bias it to be able to be burnt in the what? In the, in the engine. So I have to get it to work, have the same chemical properties like an engine. At this point, Ntambi prepares the mixer. This helps him to develop a specific chemical compound that will break down the oil after it has been heated. The amount of this specific chemical compound to be used is determined by using a litmus paper to ensure that the mixture is exothermic. If you react to particular compounds, uh, an, a base pretty much with an alcohol, the reaction should be very hot. It gives away a lot of heat. In fact, it boils it. That means exothermic, it gives away heat in the process of the reaction. After the cooking oil has undergone this process, the resulting solution is left to settle for 24 hours. This process enables the diesel to separate from the cooking oil. As a result, it does not naturally have hydrocarbons because even in my mixing, I do not include natural carbons, hydrocarbons rather. And also I do not include any particulate matter that would be actually dumped in your exhaust system, the, 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 the black smoke that you see. The biodiesel that results is safe for car use and the fumes released are not black and are free of deadly hydrocarbons that are responsible for ozone layer depletion. But what then makes this diesel more environmentally friendly compared to diesel made out of fossil fuels. I think we've tested yours just smelling cooking oil at the back of the car. So it means it's actually producing something that is healthy and compatible with the environment we have because no hydrocarbons, no sulfur, no particulate matter. And, um, and also this is, it, it's, it's a natural raw material, raw material that is degradable, biodegradable. It's not petroleum, it's not something that is not destroying our ozone light. It's something that actually we can work with. This approach to making biodiesel is scientifically referred to as transterrification. It is capable of achieving a 78.5% reduction in emissions that are harmful to the environment. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, biodiesel can reduce hydrocarbons by more than 60% carbon monoxide by more than 40% and particulates by more than 40%. Biodiesel can also be made directly from the fruit of the oil palm. Unlike conventional diesel fuel which costs 2,900 a litre, biodiesel costs 500 shillings a litre. 
But does it have any products that could affect the environment? Yes, there is a byproduct. It's called glycerin. Glycerin can you be used to make soap. Soap, basically for industrial purposes. Glycerin is actually the byproduct that can be used direct as it is to work as soap to clean these things off. Glycerin is just the precipitate that remains down after the, uh, the process. Such initiatives go to prove that science could still enable mankind to find alternative fuel sources. However, at current levels, this could still not be able to meet the world's supply. Still, this start towards more efficient energy sources could eventually help ease the toll and damage to the environment. Craig Kadoda, NTV, Ikotok. <laughs>